All right, we are ready for unit six. We're on lesson one, and we will be multiplying and dividing decimals by powers of 10. As you can see here, we're gonna be able to use a calculator to multiply and divide decimals by powers of 10, and we're also going to understand the place value system. So that is something that you need to um, have ready is a calculator. You can use a calculator that, um, you know, standard calculator that we think of, or you can use one um, on your Chromebook or your laptop, whatever you're using. You can also uh, use Google and just search for calculator and they have one available, available for you right there. Let's get started. Let's warm up with this activity here. On a slate or piece of paper, write each digit down and then place a decimal point where indicated. Then write the number in words. So you see here we have the digits 3, 5, 9, 0. In the first place, it tells you, so we're going to look at this one right here. Place the decimal point between the 9 and the 0. So you're going to put it right here. So take a moment and write this out in words. Write it out in words. Okay. As you see here, I wrote... Um, I'll change the color so that you can see this better, but it's mine. Three hundred fifty-nine. Notice I didn't put and zero tenths. You can, but it's not needed for this one. All right. Now I want you to take your decimal and place it between the five and the nine. So now you're gonna be taking that decimal and placing it right here between the five and the nine and go ahead and write it in number in the word form. All right, as you can see here, I wrote in green, I have 35 and nine tenths. I put the and because just a refresher, the and tells us that there is a decimal point because we have 35 and nine tenths. You could also have said, 90 hundredths. Either one would have been correct. Okay. Some vocab review that we need to do is uh, base in exponential notation. So remember the number that is raised to a power. For example, in 5 to the third power or 5 cubed, the base is 5. You can also look up exponential notation and power of a number n in your SRB or when you're looking up in a dictionary. Next word is exponent, and we just said that there. That's the number that is raised. It's the number used in exponential notation to tell how many times the base number is used as a factor. So again, for example, in 5 to the third power, or 5 cubed, the base was 5 and the exponent is 3. So the 5 to the third power tells us that we're multiplying 5 times 5 times 5, and that's going to equal 125. And again, you can also look up power of a number n in your SRB. Exponential notation. Remember, that is a way to show repeated multiplication by the same factor. For example, 2 cubed, or 2 to the third power, is exponential for 2 times 2 times 2. That small raised 3 was that exponent. It tells us how many times 2, which is the base, is used as a factor. And finally, a power of 10. We've got a couple different things here. The first one is a whole number that can be written as a product of 10s. For example, 100 is equal to 10 times 10, or 10 squared, 10 to the second power. 100 is called the second power of 10. 10 to the second power, or 10 squared. Another way of thinking of powers of 10 is a number that can be written as a product of 1 tenths is also a power of 10. Remember, up here is the multiplying one, and when we multiply uh, times a fraction, it's actually like dividing. So let's do this math message here. A human heart beats about 3.2 or 3 and 2 tenths million times per month. How can you write a 3.2 million in standard notation? Think about that here, okay? So we've got 3 
3.2 million. How can you write 3.2 million in standard notation? So standard's the, the key here. Right here, we have 3.2 million. How can you write it in standard notation? Something to think about there. Let's now move on to, I hope I forgot to clear that page. There we go. So if we take a look here, let's get rid of this. This would be standard notation. So you'd have 3,200,000 and we'd have zero and all the rest. Because what you see here is we put our decimal point here to get 3.2 million. We see we have 3 million and then we have 200,000. That's what 3.2 million stands for. So some strategies for that is to think of 3.2 million as 3 million plus 0.2 million. 0.2 million or two tenths of a million. You can fill in a place value chart like we did there. 3 million means that there are 3 in the millions place. The 0 0.2 million means there are 2 tenths of a million. Well, since a digit in the ones place represents 1 tenth of what is represents in the place that it's to the left, a digit in the hundreds thousands place is worth 1 tenth of a million. Write a 2 in the hundred thousands place to show 2 tenths of a million. And that's what we did right here in this one. Okay, we've got the three million and the two hundredths. That's because that's tenths, one tenth of that, and there's two of them there. And our last possible strategy here put zeros in the remaining places to the right to get three million two hundred thousand. Here's another way that you can write 3.2 million. You can take 3.2 times 10 to the sixth. 10 to the 6th is that exponential notation. So this tells us that we're going to add, there's going to be six places past the decimal here. And if you look, we don't add six zeros because when we have this here, we know we have a decimal here for the 3.2. And we've added 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this exponential, when you have a decimal, you have to pay attention to how many decimals are already written to the right? Or how many numbers are already written to the right of the decimal? We have one, so we only needed to add one, two, three, four, five to get us that six. And we'll keep looking at that as we move through the lesson. So ten, remember 10 to the six is 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. Because the base is 10. 10 to the 6 is also called power of 10. So why is that rule making sense? Well, as I just showed you, attaching six zeros does not work for this. Okay? We're going to look for patterns, and we're going to develop rules like the ones that we know for whole numbers, but they're also going to work for decimals when they're multiplied or divided by powers of 10. So as I said earlier, you're going to use a calculator to multiply and divide decimals by powers of 10 written exp in exponential notation. If you need reference, you can look at student reference book pages 334 to 335. I want to show you just to remind you we are in a new unit. It's been a while maybe since you've looked for that SRB. So remember, you can go to McGraw-Hill on the homepage. You can go find McGraw-Hill here. And you'll open up your everyday math, grade five. You'll click whichever one you have there. And then remember my ebooks. And while I'm here, remember you've got your student reference and you've got your uh, electronic journals. So if you're ever in a time where you don't know where it's at, just click here. So here's the student reference book. And remember, if we look back at our slide, 334 to 335. So remember, you can just type right here. 334 and enter.
And here we have multiplying by powers of 10 and dividing by powers of 10. So you have this here, and this goes through step by step of using a calculator. Okay, so if you have a calculator like this, fine. If not, like I said, you can use a Google version or a version on your Chromebook or laptop, whatever you might have. Okay, so when you're looking at a calculator, we want to figure out what keys on that calculator would we press to multiply 3.2 by 10 to the sixth power. You're going to press the keys and the answers in standard notation. Okay, so I want you to take a moment, look at your calculator, try typing in, uh, figuring out what would you type in to get 3.2 times 10 to the sixth power. Go ahead and pause your video, play around with your calculator, check it out, and then come back. So here I'm going to do 3.2 times 10. Now i got to figure out, all right, 10 to the 6th power. So I might click this on this Google one, and look at that. They gave me an exponent, and look at that. It gave me my 3,200,000. So that's what works on this calculator. You will have to play around and figure out. Let's say that you have a standard calculator that doesn't have these buttons over here. It only has the buttons that you see um, to the right of my mouse. So in this area right here. Well, let's start off with, let's clear that. Can this clear all the way? All right. Refresh that. Oh, that shows us what our last words were. Okay, moving on. We can do, we know that 10 to the sixth power would be a one with one, two, three, four, five, six zeros. And then we could multiply that by 3.2 and we would still get our answer. We can use what we already know to help us if our calculator doesn't happen to have an exponent button. So keep that in mind. And remember, you can come check out this and it could help you. But the, these buttons here are um, connecting to this calculator. So you'll have to play around and figure it out. Imagine that your exponent key is broken. So that's pretty much what I just said. Um, how do you multiply 3.2 times 10 to the sixth power? Try that out. Try what I just showed you. You know how to get 10 to the sixth power. You know what that is. So try doing that on your calculator because both ways work. So the keystrokes are different if we're dividing. Think about how, what would happen. Instead of multiplying, what would, you, what would you click? Pause and try that out. Look at that, my number gets extremely smaller. We notice that the decimal goes from between the three and the two and it goes all the way over to the left. One, two, three, four, five, six spots. Move six spots over. Go ahead and turn to page 196 in your math journal. And let's look at number one. When you are multiplying a number by a power of 10, do you expect the product to be greater than or less than the number that we started with? Why? Pause, fill out that, and then come back and check and see. Let's think about that answer. When you multiply a number by a power of 10. All right, when you multiply by a power of 10, Hopefully you said it will be greater. It will be larger than the start number because when we are multiplying by a number greater than one, it gives the product greater than the start number. Let's look at number two now. Again, you get to use a calculator. This is one of those times where we say, please take out that calculator. Let's use it for this lesson. Look for patterns in how the decimal point moves. Note, you may need a, to place a zero in the tenths place to show a location of a decimal point for whole numbers. For example, you would write 453.0 instead of 453. Uh, we just want to show that decimal point. 
Okay. Like we said, when we're doing our math um, and we're do finding actual answers, we don't always need the decimal, but for this point today, we do want it so that we can show where that decimal point is, is laying. So I'm going to start off with uh, going over a couple of these, and then I'm going to have you do the rest, and you'll come back and check. So I'm going to start off with 4 and 53 hundredths, and so we see that. That's our number the whole time, 4 and 53 hundredths, but then we're going to multiply them by different powers of 10. So I know that I'm going to multiply this times 10 to the first power. And so I need to show that result. So I'm going to use my calculator here. 4.53 times 10 to the first, which I can see here, 4.53 times 10 equals 45 and 3 tenths. So notice that our decimal moved over so we can see that this is now 45.3 and which direction did my decimal move i can see that it moved to the right and you can either draw an arrow or you can write an r and how many places did it move well i see that it just moved one okay now let's do the next one 4.53 times 10 to the second power now Okay, so I'm going to show you, so I know 10 to the second power is 100 times 4.53, we get 453. So this is that example there where if there's no decimal in the final answer, I'm going to have to do this, 453.0. It moved to the right again, but this time I see that it moved 1, 2 two places. Okay, so now I would like you to finish this this uh, question. So doing times 10 to the third, times 10 to the fourth, times 10 to the fifth, times 10 to the sixth. Pay attention if you see any patterns going on here. Um, again, you're starting with four and 53 hundredths and then multiplying it by those different powers of 10. Okay, but now you should have created work that looks similar to this. You should see that for each one, we went from, we went from 453 to 4,530 to 45,300 to 453,000 to 4,530,000. 4, and each time the decimal did move to the right, and you'll see that the place values went 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So looking at those results, I want you to compare the power of 10 in each row to the movement of the decimal. I want you to think, what do you notice there? So again, I want you to compare this column right here, the power of 10, to the number of places, and do you notice anything? And then using those patterns you noticed, I want you to write a rule for multiplying any decimal by a power of 10. So go ahead and pause. Look back at number two and fill in your answers. Do some reflecting for number three, A and B. Do you notice a pattern? And how does that pattern help you write a rule? All right, so the pattern that you hopefully saw was that the decimal point always moves to the right. And the number of place it moves is the exact same to the exponent in the power of 10. So if we look back at that, you can see 10 to the first power, it moved to the right one place. If we multiplied it by 10 to the second, it moved to the right two places. Same thing down here. Multiplied by 10 to the sixth, it moved to the right, and it was six places. Noticing that when you multiply, it moves to the right, and the exponent is how many places. So a sample answer for a, a rule that we could write is to multiply a decimal by a power of 10, you move the decimal point to the right, and the exponent tells you how many places to move it. And you may have to you may have to write extra zeros. Does that connect to our opening problem here? When we had 3.2 million? We had that decimal here, and then we moved the decimal six places. 
Sure does. Okay. Question four asks you now to think about if you were to divide, if you divided a start number by a power of 10, do you think the quotient would be greater than or less than that start number? Do you think it would be greater than or less than? Go ahead and reflect on number four. Pause your video to get to write down your work. And then come back and let's see. Hopefully you said that it was going to be less than the start number because when we divide a number greater than one, it gives us a quotient less than the dividend. So let's do some work with the dividing of powers of 10. Again, you get to use that calculator and you're going to do the same thing. So I'm going to do a couple for you. I want you looking for the patterns, the direction, the number of places. Pay attention to those things that we're going to be looking for here. So we've got 67 and 2 tenths divided by 10 to the first power. So 67 and 2 tenths divided by 10 to the first power. Notice my decimal has moved to the left this time. So it's 6.72. So here I would put 6.72. I'm taking a look. It moved this way. So it moved to the left and it moved one place. I'm, I want you to do the rest of these. I want you to see. Try out 67.2 or 67 and 2 tenths divided by 10 to the second power. Divide by 10 to the third, 10 to the fourth, 10 to the fifth. Okay? And then pause your video, work these out on your calculator, fill in your chart, and then come back and let's check your work together. So my chart that I have filled out, I have 6 and 72 hundredths. Then we go to 672 thousandths. Then we, you see we quickly drop. Uh, the decimal keeps moving over to the left. And when we see here that we've got um, one place, one, two, three, four, five, six. Notice here, so if we started, it was one, two, three, four, five, six places there. So you guessed it, you're going to do some reflecting on that. And hopefully you have picked up on some patterns that you see here that also connect to the multiplying. So look at your results in the table. Compare the power of 10 in each row to the movement of the decimal place. What do you notice? And then use patterns you noticed to write a rule for dividing any decimal by a power of 10. Pause your video and then come back and let's talk about it. So again, the decimal point always moves to the left when dividing. We take a look up here. Every time we divided, it moved to the left. And also, the exponent told us how many places it moved to the left. So a rule that we could come up with is to divide a decimal by a power of 10. You move the decimal point to the left. The exponent tells you how many places to move it you might have to write extra zeros, as you see here. We definitely had to write extra zeros. Here are some other sample rules. When multiplying by a power 10, the decimal point moves to the right. The exponent in the power of 10 indicates or tells us the number of places the decimal point moves. Zeros are sometimes attached to the right of the starting digits to show how many digits have shifted. You can also look up common misconception notes. And when dividing by a power of 10, the decimal point moves to the left. The exponent in the power of 10 indicates the number of places the decimal point moves. Zeros are sometimes inserted to the left of the starting digits to show how digits have shifted. So why do the patterns that we identified in the problems make sense? What happens to each digit when the decimal point moves to the right? These are questions I want you to be asking yourself. Think through them. Let these ref help you reflect. How does the value of a digit change when it shifts one place to the left? Are they getting numbers getting bigger? 
Are they getting smaller? And how does shifting a place connect to multiplying by 10? Why would the number of places that digits shift match the exponent for the power of 10? So let's look at this question. Why would the number of places that digit shifts match the exponent for a power of 10? Let's think about what we've talked about all school year. We are working in base 10 numbers. And we know that when we're looking at a place value chart here, remember, we know that if we move to the left, if we move that decimal to the left, we are getting smaller. And we know that if we move the decimal to the right, our number is going to get bigger or larger. We know that we are multiplying by 10, we move to the right, and we know that if we are dividing by 10, we move to the left. It's also as that fraction there. With, and this is when we're talking about our decimal now. If we move the decimal here, move it here, move it here, we're getting smaller. Our number is getting smaller. We can, we, can talk, we can think about that as using the number 224 if with our decimal here. If I move it to right here, look at that. My number has gotten smaller. If I take 224 and I divide it by 10, just divide it by 10, let's look. Again, you don't have to do this. You can use a calculator. 224 divided by 10 equals 22.4. Let's take that same number, 224, and divide it by 100. We get 2.24. Notice each time the decimal moves. And we know powers of 10 connect to those hundreds, thousands, tens, hundreds, hundred thousands. So now that we've discussed these rules, we want to think, does it apply to whole numbers? Okay, so remember that sometimes we have to attach zeros because we are creating empty spaces and those empty spaces have to be filled up. So attaching the number of zeros indicated by the exponent and the power of 10 works for whole numbers only because there's no digits. We have to attach the number of places that have to be filled when we're working with decimals because some of those places are already filled. So again, it's not always necessary to attach a zero. Sometimes you don't need that at all. So for example, four and 53 hundredths times 10 to the first can be found by just shifting that decimal place one, t one place to the right. And we don't have to add any zeros there because there's already a three in that place value. So there's no additional zeros that are needed. <clears throat> so let's do a couple examples before we move on. Um, I just, I'll just do these for you here and then we'll move on to your math journal. We see 2.3 times 10 to the fourth. I'm going to rewrite 2.3 here. And I see times, so that tells me it's gonna move to the right. And this exponent of four tells me how many times. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four. Put my decimal point here. Now notice I have created three little slots for a number to go in. That tells me where a zero needs to be filled in. Think of it like eggs in an egg carton. We had three empty spots, so I'm going to put three eggs in there. So I've created a new number of 23. Thousand. Same thing with 2.3, but this time it's divided, so I'm going to move my decimal to the left four spots. So I'm going to write my 2.3 here, and I'm going to go one, two, three, four. Now I'm going to put my decimal here, and I'm going to fill in a spot here, here, and here. So I can rewrite this. 
I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to put 0 0.0002. Three. Notice I added another zero here just to show me there's no there's nothing in the ones place. Just helps me understand that number a little bit better. So turn to page 196, 197 if you're not already there. And we're going to be looking at problem 7 through 12. What you're going to do here on your own, I want you to Apply the rules for multiplying and dividing by powers of 10. So you're going to use the rules you discovered to multiply and divide in problems 7 through 12. I do not want you using a calculator on these. I want you to use the rule. There's no need for a calculator here. So you're going to do 5.8 times 10 to the second, 2.8 times 10 to the, or divided by 10 to the second, 673.9 divided by 10 to the second, 23.7 times 10 to the second, 3.1 times 10 to the 4th, and 49.2 divided by 10 to the 4th. Pause your video, use the rule, come back, and let's check it out. Here we go. Number 7 should change to 580. 8 should change to 28 thousandths. Notice that's a, with a TH. Number 9, 6 and 739 thousandths. 10, 2,370. 11, 31,000. And 12, we've got 0 0.00492. If you notice, all the multiplication ones, the numbers got larger. All the division, the numbers got smaller. So I want you to explain the placement of the decimal point in your answer for number seven. So if we take a look at number seven, you said 5.8 times 10 to the second, and we got 580. So explain, what is the decimal point? Explain the placement, where that is put. The decimal point moved two places to the right because multiplying by 10 to the second is like multiplying by 10 twice. So each number is multiplied by 10. The digits shift a place to the left, and the decimal point shifts to the right. That is the end of lesson one for unit six, multiplying and dividing decimals by powers of 10. Today, we were able to use a calculator to multiply and divide decimals by powers of 10, and we also continued understanding that place value system.